Yo, what's up, everybody? Cameron Van Hoy here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for spending some time. Uh, great to see you all. Hope everyone's having a wonderful life. Uh, let's talk about movies, specifically screenplays. That's what I want to talk about today because I'm dealing with a new screenplay at the moment that I got some notes on. I wanted to talk about the notes process and the rewriting process because it's such a huge part of writing a script. You know, you write a movie and Sometimes you love it when you're done. Other times you don't love it. But, you know, if you do love it, maybe you send it around for notes. And even if you don't love it, maybe you think something's there. You send it around for notes and you get some notes back. And then you write. And it's just like such a complicated process, or at least it can be. There's a lot of landmines to kind of maneuver. And I wanted to speak to that. Um, I guess I'll start with where I'm at. So I wrote a screenplay recently, which I love. And it's, it was an idea that's been kind of like cooking. It's been cooking for, for years, to be honest with you. When I first moved to Los Angeles to make movies, well before I'd done anything, I had this concept for this movie with the title and the vague idea of it. I knew it was like set in high school and I knew that it was kind of about crime centered around a pot dealer and that it would tell the stories of my high school years in San Diego and, um, and be kind of like a little dangerous, but a little fun and really play to the tropes of San Diego 90s stoner culture with that soundtrack. And so I, I actually like early on, I kind of developed these stories with another writer friend of mine from high school uh, who was a really talented writer um, not doing it anymore, unfortunate, never really pursued it outside of school and, you know, doing his own thing, but, you know, really had talent. And so we pursued it, but it didn't really go anywhere. And I got caught up making all the movies I've made sense and life, etc. And I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to tell these stories, these San Diego stories. Um, and a few years ago, I started really thinking about how this like world that I want to work within and these stories that I want to tell and these characters that I want to explore could really fit wonderfully into like a noir ish thing. And like, what if I just really used a noir plot line, like more traditional noir plot and placed all of this, you know, inside of that. So it's not necessarily like autobiographical, like specifically, in that it's like my life or anything, but it's more a fiction, a story of fiction within this world with these characters. And so I noodled on that for a long time and thought about a lot of the structures of noir, basic characters and ideas and stories that I respond to, movies that I love. Still never did anything with it, right? Um, you know, again, between making my own films and then all the other screenplays and projects that I develop along the way that almost happen and don't happen, which is part of being a filmmaker, it still was just something that sat there. And then very recently, I had this other moment where one, it just kind of dawned upon me that there were certain pieces in place for a movie like this to occur, one. And two, I watched this old noir movie that really inspired me. And it just hit me like a bang. And I said, okay, I got to write this movie. Um, I'm going to set it in high school. It's going to be centered around a pot dealer. But that pot dealer is really going to be like the detective character of a noir film who's going to get into this really dangerous world. And off I went. Um, and the writing process was really fun writing this movie because I just listened to all the music from that era. I made a playlist on Spotify, which I like to do when I write, I listen to a lot of music that I think will work in the film. And it really inspires me. and gives me lots of energy and it's great. Like sometimes you write in silence and that's wonderful too. Sometimes you need the silence, but other times there's like, you know, if there's a soundtrack, you just kind of move with it and it creates this vibe. And sometimes it creates energy. And then you're like, Oh, you're going and you're writing. Um, so I, I was doing that while writing and it was a lot of fun. And I wrote this thing pretty quick, right? I remember like back years ago, I never made a movie that I wrote this quick, but I always, I would always get these ideas for movies and be like, I got to write this immediately. And I write it in like a weekend craziness. Um, I've since changed. Now I have certain screenplays that I'm still writing that I've been writing for years and I'm always noodling and thinking, right? So, um, but this one was quicker than I had done in a while but still true to my desire to like, when I get an idea, just push it out. 
Um, and so I did that and I sent it to my manager. I have a manager who represents me as a writer and a director. Um, I will do a video on managers, representation, the nuances, all that stuff. Um, not going to get into it now, but I love my managers. Uh, there's two over there that I work with. They're wonderful. And I sent them the screenplay. I was like, let's go. This is perfect. Perfect for a variety of reasons. Um, they, they also have some clients that are just perfect for this movie, for like a high school setting. So that was part of the impetus for really focusing on something like that. Cause I, I often write things that are very masculine, maybe a little bit more mature. Um, even though tragedy girls, the film that I produced and made is a high school set story. And so, and I love that. Um, and so this is kind of me returning to that, but just within a, a different genre, it's not horror by any means. It's, it's just crime noir. It's high school noir. And so gave it to the manager. Perfect. Let's go. Let's put some, you know, a couple of weeks go by. I don't hear anything. I'm like, oh, you know, I thought I just wrote a great screenplay and I'm like, ready, like, what are we doing? Let's go, you know, don't hear anything. A couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks, I get a call out of the blue from my manager. Calls, just read the screenplay. This movie's a hit. Love it. Love the script. Which, you know, people can say that, not say that. You got to know, I don't know. You got to know people in this instance. Um, I don't really hear that from my reps very often. Um, and I do write a lot every year. I certainly have a few screenplays that I'm sending in. Um, what do you guys think? And so I was like, oh, great. So they really like it. But then it's like, oh, but we have notes. We have some notes. You're 70% there, which it's weird because you should always know that your first, second, third draft is not really there. But still, many times you think it is there. And so the second I hear notes, there's like this one part of me that goes, ah, notes. Ah, I don't want notes. I want to go make the movie. And there's another part of me that goes, okay, let's listen to the notes. Now, notes are complicated, mainly because, and this is, listen, this is true whether it's a screenplay or a movie with editing, which is also a very important thing to get notes on along the way. Um, some notes are great and some notes are terrible. And it's very hard to know what notes are real, what notes are not real, what notes you should focus on, what notes you should not focus on, etc. And many times people give you notes like because they feel something's off, but then they're trying to come up with a solution. And then they give you an idea, which is their note. And many times, you know, their instinct that something is off might be correct, but their answer, their solution to how to fix it is completely incorrect. Or that could be vice versa. You know, the note might be a really great idea, but for a section or a problem that does not actually exist. So why change something that's working, right? So dealing with notes can be a landmine. So, um, and I know this, you know, but yet they're still great and you need to do it. Uh, so, you know, I go into the, the meeting, the notes meeting with the reps. Okay, let's hear the notes. And they give them to me. Um, and I'm, you know, like I'm sitting and I'm listening and I like to just listen. I like to just listen. It's something that I think is important to do. There is, I hate it when other writers, directors, filmmakers, producers, reps, whatever, because I've, you know, outside of the things that I've written, the things that I've produced and dealing with other writers and the films that I've been a part of many, or even developing projects that don't get made. You're dealing with writers and agents and producers, all these people. Many times there are notes meetings with writers and you give them a note. And the second you give it to them, they're like, well, blah, 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 blah. And I fucking hate that. I really dislike it. Um, it's like, just be quiet and listen. You don't have to push out all of your, you know, like there is something very powerful to just listening, letting people speak, staying silent, letting them talk, still stay silent, see what else comes out. Right? You don't have to respond right away. And it's also good to force yourself to make sure that you're really listening, thinking about what they're saying, and then think about how you're thinking about what they're saying, right? Because 
you could easily be sitting there going, this is bullshit. That's a stupid note. That doesn't work. But you, yeah, I don't think you should do that. I think you should really try and listen and, li- and see where it's coming from. And, and you, know, you know, it's like you have to really let yourself be open to notes and to ideas. But then here's the other hard part. You also don't want to be, which I've been in this spot before and seen others in the spot. You also don't want to be, I'll take any note. Anything, anything. What's okay. Yeah. Oh, you know, and then like, because these stories can easily just be changed forever and ever and ever, right. You can work on it forever. In fact, and I think this is very true. Um, a good friend of mine and my mentor, uh, growing up was an actor, Martin Landau and, uh, Martin Landau was a legend Academy award winner. If you don't know him, you don't know his work. You should check him out watch some of his stuff. And he was a great man. He was a member of the actor studio and really cared about that institution. He taught there and I got to know him very well. I worked with him and was a member at the studio and would just put up scenes and get critiqued by him and watch him critique other people. And he would just talk forever, but you know, he'd grown up and come up with all the greats and had been around them. So there was just a plethora of knowledge that he was able to share. And I remember he talked about how acting and writing are very similar in that you can always, he looks at it like it's always a rehearsal. Every take, every pass, it's just a rehearsal. So he'll do, you know, he'll be rehearsing. He gets the script and it's like, okay, well, how much time does he have between getting the script and shooting? Well, that much time he can fill working on it, rehearsing. And every time he's kind of like finding something different and trying something and further exploring and noodling and building and making choices. And then when he comes to set, he still treats it like a rehearsal. So now it's take one. Okay. He does a take and now the director is going to give some notes and the other actor was different and the location might be a little different. So that might affect the work. And so then he'll adjust again and he's treating it like a rehearsal. He'll do the next take. And he just treats everything like it's a rehearsal until they take it away from him. Which if you're an actor is cut, we're moving on, right? That's it. That was your time, you know, between you got the script and you shot that scene and the director goes, cut, we got it, we're moving on. Well, that's, that's it, you know, that was it. And every little moment in between is a rehearsal. And I think that's a very important lesson for any creative person to take. You can apply it to painting, art, writing. You know, how long do you work on something? Um, I think for me, I like to work on it until they take it away from me, which many times can be tough because I'm in charge of my own films, producing, making them happen from the get-go. So there's no one to take it away from me, but me, which is where I become kind of OCD. Um, which I'd love to talk about at another time is like that quality uh, in artists and, and how to combat it and also how to use it. But, um, you know, a script being taken away from you could be, hey, we're sending it in to get a read. It's time, you know, like what we're going to do with this screenplay, right? We're going to send it around to some finance people, some actors. They're going to read it. And they're going to decide if they like it or not. So I can put in as much work in between I started it and the, t- the day that we send it as I decide and get, grab my information. So it's important to look at these things as, cause they are works in process. You know, even when an actor changes a line on the day, that's a change. That's, 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 that's building. That's still finessing the story. And you're always going to be doing that. So it's, I think it's important to, but it gets firmer. Hopefully over time, it gets a little bit more detailed. And so anyways, I get the notes and my, my initial thought when I got the notes from my reps was like, okay, I hear, you know, a couple things like one was the romance, right? Cause there's, there's romance involved that they were like, uh, I was like, well, I think the, the, the reason for this, the motivation for this one thing is this romance, this passion that's there. Okay. Then they go, I don't, I, I really feel that. Oh, interesting. You really feel that? Okay, interesting. You didn't really feel that the romance isn't coming through. Now, in my mind, I'm like, well, it's pretty clearly there. There's this whole romance thing. How do I amplify that? Do I do I get like nail it on the head? Like, I love you. Do I put more of this language in? It's really clear. Or do I try to keep it a little bit more subtle and nuanced? Because many times, 
as a writer, you're writing things, especially if you're trying to be subtle or nuanced or use subtext, you're, you're writing and building things that when you read it, you see it in your head, right? You're like, oh, I get how this is going to work. There's going to be the soundtrack and the, the visual language is going to be romantic. We're going to feel it. And then there's going to be these long looks into each other's eyes and the audience is going to know. They're going to know and that we're, we're going to build so much romance. We don't even have to say, I love you. Right. And like that's cinema. And it's, it's important to want to try to do these things, but then you also have to think about the screenplay from the perspective of the read and, and, and is it tracking? Um, so I started thinking about that, you know? Um, and then it, it was interesting to hear some of the films that they're comparing it to. Well, remember this movie with this, this movie with that. And I remember when I saw this film at Sundance and it did this, and I love these kinds of movies and I'm, and like they're hitting within the ballpark of the movies that I went after, but still like, you know, some of their references were more along the lines of like the usual suspects where this is way more in my mind of like body heat, you know, or like a, like one of these romance, erotic, noir thrillers um, that were really popular in the 80s, 90s, but like redone today, um, even though it's set in the 90s, but just like doing one today. Um, and so I'm like, oh, interesting, you know, uh, and it, tone is very important with a movie and with a story. You have to find your tone. And in fact, a really wonderful writer, friend of mine, who's an Academy Award winner, who I've written a script with before, um, taught me something really cool, which I think is true. And he was like, whenever I write a movie, I try to pick three films that this movie could live in tonally, not even story-wise, tonally, the tone. And if if it's ever out of that tonally, it's not going to go into this screenplay. And that's what, because tone is hard. Tone is very hard. You have to, tone is very instinctual. You have to know tone. Um, and, and I will probably save tone as like a longer conversation on how to get tone because tone is very different than story. Tone to me is like 50% of the visual. I mean, but the thing is, is audio also play tone is huge. There's like plot, story, character, but then there's also tone, vibe, feeling, you know, like those are things, those are maybe even more important because those are the unquantifiable moments in movies that really hit us and keep us um, and engage us more so, I think, than like a really good story. That might not be true. I don't know. I've got to really think about it, but tone is important. You know, if you botch your tone, it's very hard for people to, to follow a movie when the tone is all over the place. You can feel it immediately. So you got to be sensitive to tone. We should probably talk about tone more at another time. So I get these notes, you know, all the notes, little specific notes. Hey, this doesn't make sense here. Potentially look at that. And then the larger thing like romance and then the second act, we need something that's really, you know, and then relook at the ending, whatever. Right. Which, Hey, usually what, are, you know, what are the notes? Hey, the beginning, the middle and the end. Right. Um, so I, I go away and I'm like, all right, let's, let's think about these notes. And I just, I, I, I'm just going to read the script. I'm just going to reread it again. Knowing this, I took a little bit of a break, which by the way, taking a break is great. You want to take breaks. It giving yourself a fresh set of eyes, really removing yourself from something and then coming back to it and reading, watching. It's amazing. It's very hard because that allow it, it like gets you back to being a little objective because you do get this weird tunnel vision after you're in something for a while. And I'll admit, like there was within the screenplay. Which I, I knew it was there, but I didn't fully consciously understand it. Is I had this wonderful noir story occurring, this great thriller, romance thriller structure. But I knew when I was doing it, I was also using a little bit of like just like standard crime stuff, like in the way of flashbacks, telling secondary stories, which is something that I love. I love it. I love the way that Scorsese will use narration to tell these longer stories. We've seen that again most recently with Euphoria, right? Which is very kind of Scorsese inspired in many ways with that narration. Um, 
about other characters and certain things and crimes and stuff that happen. Like Scorsese will talk about, as an example, like in a casino scene, you know, he'll talk about the way that the casino works, like the pit boss watches the this boss, you know, like you talk about the way it all happens in the eyes in the sky, right? Whereas like in a euphoria, it's more character developed. It's like, well, she fell in love here, but then was brokenhearted there. But then like, it's all done very visual, very beautiful. Voiceover is incredible. Uh, and I knew I wanted to use voiceover in this and I do. Um, but then even like Tarantino style storytelling where he'll go off on these secondary little stories that might not have so much to do with the driving plot. Um, but it just feels, it feels like a novel. It feels it's storytelling, right? It's just fun storytelling where you go on these little tangents, these little side adventures. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson used to do this in his early days. Boogie nice. He does it a bunch um, as well. And so like I wanted that and I was playing with these side stories via narration because I have so many stories I want to tell about, you know, this world. Um, but then when rereading it again and thinking about those notes, I, I realized, okay, this movie is about these two people. It's a romance thing. It's a very dangerous romance. And I need to, I need to focus on that more than these other side story things. And that's, that was a wonderful realization for me. And so I started stripping them away and then finding ways to just engage with these two characters more. What can happen next between them? What's interesting? How does this develop? How does it become more complex? How do we flip flop? How do we make it dangerous? How do we make it mysterious? Because these are the tropes of these genres, right? You want mystery, tension, passion, romance, all of this stuff. So how can I further build that between these two people? And I started, I started going with that and it's great. It's absolutely great. It's absolutely what is right for the story. And that came out of being open to some notes, taking some time away and really, you know, just, I don't know. I don't know what, it, I don't know. You just gotta, just gotta do it. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it came out of, but that was my process. And I'm very happy about these latest changes. And I certainly hope that one day you watch this video or someone watches this video. Maybe it's you after you've seen the movie that's been made and you can see, wow, like that was the process to get to this point. Um, because I'm happy with it. I'm happy with where the script is. I'm not even saying that it's done. There, it might, who knows where, who knows where it will go. Um, but I will keep working on it until they take it away from me. Hey, thank you very much for coming, listening. And I hope to talk again with you soon. Have a great day.